very long title of my presentation. Um, essentially, it's uh, in two parts. First of all, I'm going to, come to present our, our section, the flight vehicles and our thermodynamics engineering section. Better this way? Better this way? Okay. Um, and afterwards, I'll give a brief overview of some of the uh, programs, uh, projects, and technology developments that are currently going on uh, within Europe. Not necessarily um, within ESA, but also uh, within Europe. So for those of you who have worked with ESA before, um, for a very long time already perhaps, uh, you might not recognize the name, this uh, section name. It's actually because six months ago we uh, received new responsibilities, uh, and therefore also a new name. We used to be just the aerothermodynamics engineering section. Now we are flight vehicles in aerothermodynamics uh, engineering section. So, what, did, what uh, does this mean in, in, in practice? So, um, we are now also the focal point for architecture design, analysis and um, technical assessment of uh, space transportation vehicles. So, both launchers, so reusable launchers, expendable launchers, uh, re-entry vehicles, upper stages, etc. So we're doing uh, quick design iterations and also um, feasibility assessments of new concepts. That's essentially the new part of our section. Uh, besides that, we also do coordinated um, R&D, uh, give project support to projects within ESA um, on essentially the competences that we have uh, in-house. So aerodynamics, uh, thermodynamics, flight vehicles, uh, etc. So some of the activities that we are involved in is now on the top left you see flight vehicles engineering. So that's the new part of the section uh, in which we do more system level activities, um, performance analysis of uh, launch vehicles, micro launches, etc. And the rest is uh, let's say, are the classical activities that we also did before. So aerodynamics and aerodynamics. Um, even closer, like this? Okay, sorry. Uh, decelerators, so not only uh, parachutes and parafoils, but also deployable, inflatable uh, accelerators. Um, of course, doing experiments, uh, both in wind tunnels, but also flight experiments, uh, drop testing of high altitude balloons, etc. Um, there is a topic there, fluid dynamics, which is actually more on the numerical side of fluid dynamics. So, uh, new ways of, of uh, modeling fluid dynamics, lattice Boltzmann method, uh, particle methods for uh, multi-phase fluids, um, sloshing, etc. Uh, design for the Mars on the top right is of course a, a very large topic now uh, within ESA and within Europe especially. Um, so we give a lot of support to uh, the clean space program within ESA on uh, ablators, etc. We do post flight analysis um, and also on the, on the bottom right you see contamination. Uh, not only plume modeling of plume impingement uh, contamination but also contamination uh, for example of, of particulates during AIT or during um, the launch. So uh, contamination transfer from Bearing onto optical surfaces of the spacecraft. So that's in very short our section. Now uh, I'll give an overview of some of the projects uh, currently going on in Europe. Uh, I don't have much time, of course, so this is very much a selection of projects, definitely not a uh, full overview. I've divided them into seven topics. So the first one is, uh, let's say, Earth for entry and re entry applications. One of the largest projects uh, now within ESA, of course, as you might, uh, might uh, know, of course, is a space weather program, which is a uh, reusable and affordable European space transportation vehicle, uh, which will uh, serve essentially as a platform both for microgravity experiments, but also in orbit demonstration, uh, etc. Um, of course, heavily, uh, Italy is very heavily involved in this. Then, on the topic of decelerators, um, we have inflatable decelerators or deployable uh, decelerators. In the UK, they're looking at um, some flexible TPS and inflatables, uh, testing this at uh, the alarm flow. Uh, there are some activities going on on um, uh, very large diameter deployable uh, vehicles and actually testing them in, uh, in the wind tunnel. And there's also some projects going on where um, they have deployable vanes which can then rotate and um, induce a rotation of the vehicle and therefore stabilizing your vehicle. And of course also this is um, foldable, deployable, heat shield, flexible TPS, uh, this umbrella type uh, um, structure. <coughs> in Italy there's this program uh, in which 
some of you uh, will notice, of course, uh, which is MISVEL, which is a um, uh, small satellite with an orbital module to do experiments, and then a re-entry module with this uh, deployable structure. And there's the Mini Irene. Uh, Mini Irene has a similar uh, structure, so flexible TPS. Uh, Mini Irene has been uh, qualified, has been tested uh, in the Shiroko uh, Cosmo Wind Tunnel. And currently, we're looking for uh, flight opportunities for Mini Irene, so later this year. As I mentioned earlier, design for demise is actually quite a uh, big topic nowadays within ESA. One of the main issues here is that the modeling of, um, of re-entry aerodynamics, heat fluxes, is quite complicated. Um, in the UK, we're doing some experiments and simulations uh, of simple shapes, um, because already on simple shapes we have difficulties. So, doing numerical simulations and then validating that with experiments in the wind tunnel. There's also some testing going on on VKI, uh, VKI in Belgium. Um, and one of the main issues is, okay, we can do ground experiments, or wind tunnel experiments, um, but it's very, very difficult to get actual flight data of demiseability. So, uh, we're developing this demise observation uh, capsule on the dock, which will be attached to an upper stage, uh, and which will record and observe and, uh, and measure certain parameters during the demise. So, access to space, uh, here I very much focus on the propulsion side. Um, as Dr. Paul already mentioned, there is this uh, the Sabre uh, engine, which is a hybrid everything uh, um, engine, which has been tested already on the level of the heat exchanger, and later uh, this year, next year, um, hopefully, they will be testing the, uh, the core. And this engine would allow a single stage to orbit vehicle. Uh, this vehicle they're also designing, and it's called the Skylon vehicle. Uh, Skylon vehicle has been tested um, at the University of Oxford. Here on the left you see a video of a free-flying model of the Skylon vehicle. Uh, and from this free-flying model, they're ex essentially extracting uh, lift characteristics. The University of Oxford is also giving support to our uh, colleagues at UQ uh, on, on the Spartan uh, concept, Spartan intake, which is a three-stage to orbit concept, uh, in which the second stage is a uh, kind of So, high-speed cruisers, uh, civil transportation at, at uh, hypersonic speeds, a very large project here, which uh, probably has already uh, come up in the, in the last two days, is the Hexafly International Project, which is um, an FP7 project, so a European Commission project, co-funded by ESA, Russian Federation, and uh, Australia. The goal here is to actually assemble um, and actually flight test this vehicle in an unpowered gliding uh, mode. Uh, and thereby also increasing the TRL of the heat technologies uh, in this hypersonic flight. This hopefully will, will fly soon. Um, on, uh, it will be launched on the on Brazilian uh, launch vehicle. The second project is the Stratoflight project. I think there was already a presentation of this uh, yesterday um, from the University of uh, Torino. Uh, so I will not go in detail here. Essentially, it will uh, push forward this, this concept and refine it, and also refine the, the concept of, uh, of operations of these kind of uh, vehicles. There are some flight experiments going on um, here now, because I mean, in time I'm focusing more on uh, reusability. So reusability is a large uh, say, concept nowadays that's being explored or research going into it. So the LR is flying, or will be flying, this reusable uh, flight experiment. The REFX is supposed to fly from 2021 onwards. Uh, it's a winged first stage, um, usable uh, first stage. Actually. DLR is also involved together with uh, Kness and JAXA on the Callisto concept, which is this kind of uh, tossback uh, concept. Um, and they plan to have a number of flights also from 2021 onwards uh, and essentially demonstrate some key technologies for vertical takeoff, vertical landing in Europe. And they're also doing some system studies um, to look into different configurations with different. Uh, reusable uh, stages. An additional program, um, the Horizon 2020 program, is called Falcon, in which they want to have um, an in-air retrieval capability. <coughs> they're actually going to do a lab-scale uh, testing of this concept. And in, in addition, they're testing some other key technologies like uh, um, cryogenic tank installations. Uh, they're doing thermomechanical fatigue testing uh, to feed the lifetime of our crush chambers, etc. 
And of course, technologies uh, are being developed to really um, uh, enable hypersonic flight. Uh, in particular, there's of course material uh, development. So at Imperial College, they have developed this um, zirconium bromide based porous material, uh, which is uh, being tested or has been tested at IRS in Stuttgart and also at the University of Oxford. Another very large project that is uh, happening now, it's also Horizon 2020 program. Um, actually, the University of Naples is, uh, is involved. There's a lot of, uh, it's a very large consortium over uh, six different countries in which they want to do, uh, design, develop, manufacture, and testing of uh, CMC materials. And of course, if we want to test, we need uh, facilities, we need uh, test equipment. So, uh, in the UK, there is this uh, development of a diamond-based heat flux sensor, a heat flux gauge, which has a fast response, but in addition is very robust, so it can, uh, can survive, let's say, high-speed particle impacts, for example, from night flight. We also commissioned now the T6 stalker tunnel. It's the same stalker from the previous presentation, very stalker. Um, they want to have the fastest uh, wind tunnel in Europe, so at the moment they've commissioned it up to 60 megapascal, but eventually they want to go to 100 megapascal um, and reach 20 kilometers per second. In Manchester, they're doing some uh, diagnostics, some, some uh, development of uh, optical measurements. One of them is the background-oriented Schlieren technique, which is a Schlieren technique that doesn't need um, a specific light setup with a knife edge, but uses a background with a specific pattern. Um, from observing this pattern, you can reconstruct your density gradients. And also this light field PSP, which is a pressure sensitive paint um, observed through a light field camera in which it doesn't only detect intensity but also the direction from which the intensity is coming. In Portugal, we are developing the ESTER facility, which is the European shock tube for uh, high entity research. The use case for this facility is very much uh, planetary entry probes. So, as you will know, it's very currently TPS. Uh, um, subsystems on these kind of vehicles are very much over-designed because there's huge uncertainties on, uh, for example, radiative heating, but also um, non-equilibrium effects, etc. And in this facility, we will be able to re reconstruct or reproduce um, entry conditions on many of the planetary uh, systems, so Earth, Mars, and Venus, but also the gas giants, uh, up to 18 kilometers uh, per second. This facility will be um, inaugurated this summer, but we'll have uh, some more qualification and operational testing afterwards. And of course, there's also a lot of fundamental research going on. The, all the previous research was quite applied already. Um, we also need really uh, fundamental research in hypersonics, for example, in, in the modeling of uh, vibrational kinetics. Um, so this is the uh, um, implementation of a state-to-state -state vibrational kinetics model uh, on GPUs to allow very fast say modeling of, of these kind of uh, kinetics and they've shown also some, some agreements, uh, sometimes better agreement than some of the established models but not the general part um, when it comes to heating and then short stand up this kind of Hypersonic boundary layer transition is a very large topic nowadays, uh, very active. Actually um, from the introduction uh, you might have heard also my, my own PhD a number of years ago was on this topic. Many different universities, many different research institutes are active in this. Uh, both numerical and uh, experimental, <laughs> and some other topics, uh, fundamental topics, which we need to uh, investigate are gas surface interactions um, and also the effect of certain material properties, for example, on emissivity, etc. So, a lot of activities going on. I went very quickly over over some of them. Um, if you want to know more information about these kind of activities, more in depth, or you're working on some activities that you want to. You want to share the data uh, with your peers in, on an international stage. ESA is organizing two conferences. Um, the first one is actually going to be in Italy here uh, later this year. So at the end of September, beginning of October, which is the International Conference on Flight Vehicles, Aerothermodynamics, and the Entry Missions in Engineering. Once again, a very long title, but we abbreviate it as uh, FAR, FAR 2019. Uh, it's going to be a very uh, nice conference, I think, uh, in, uh, in Monopoly, in Italy, so in, in Fulia. Um, the abstract submission is already closed, officially. Um, however, if you're still interested in submitting something, be quick, because I have noticed that yesterday 
that uh, you can still register and you can still submit something. So even though officially it's been closed, if you're quick, you might uh, still get something. Um, that's this year. Next year we will have uh, the HIST 2020 conference, which is the International Conference on High-Speed Vehicle Science and Technology. Um, this is uh, the first one that was held a number of uh, months ago, I think six months ago roughly, uh, in Moscow, uh, hosted by Tsagi, a very, very um, successful conference. I will now have the second one in Bruges, in Italy, in April 2020. The abstract submission uh, is open and will be closing at the end of September. So, thank you very much for your attention. Um, if you have any questions, I can answer them either now or in the talk break or seven minutes. Thanks for the presentation. You have questions? I'll start with a basic question. So, uh, there's, there's really a lot of basic research going in Europe on uh, hypersonic flight. Uh, there, there is already a need uh, development roadmap to go to commercial flight or it is too early. Um, really good commercial flights, I'm not aware of any roadmap there actually. Um, but it's true there is a lot of activities going on, a lot of research for basic and um, at a higher tier level. Actually a lot of it is here in Italy, so Italy is very active in this field. I refrain from putting too many Italian activities in, I put a few in, but um, there's many many more. Um, on a roadmap I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if there is such a thing already, but it's uh, no. Okay. Any other questions? So thank you very much for your